Welcome to Patreon Overtime. I'm still Brian. This is still my Tesla weekend. Let's keep the news going. If you haven't already watched the main news for the week, check the link in the corner and the description below. So anyway, let's get to it. This is Shanghai, and it appears to be the newly acquired land where the Model 2 will be built. If you watch my weekly Giga Texas tracker, you'll know that I am dogged in my Excel spreadsheets, and this site will be no exception. You can bet your butt I'm going to track it. And I may even start in the next few days if it's humanly possible to find the time, because, I mean, no better time to start than when we're still at 0%. Deutsche Bank is also feeling pretty bullish about the likes of Tesla, due in part to the price increases we are seeing in Shanghai. Barron's put out a story, how is Tesla stock worth 3000 by becoming bigger than Apple? And again, this is still coverage of Kathy Wood and ARK Invest, but uh, yeah, uh, Barron's does not think that this is a crazy assumption. Uh, Piper Sandler, uh, Alex Potter said 1200 uh, and that seems not even that crazy. That's only 30% uh, higher than the figures we saw in January. Further in legislative news, uh, exclusive U.S. Senators press Biden to set end date for gasoline-powered cars. It's uh, interesting because other countries have already done this. It's not something super crazy uh, that hasn't been done before. It's just something that the U.S. hasn't done and maybe should. Tesla urges court to reinstate hike in emissions penalties. One of the last things the previous administration did on his way out the door was on January 14th, just six days before leaving, delayed the start of higher penalties until the 2022 model year. Um, you know, we've got to clean up our pollution, guys. I don't have to tell you that. You're here. But man, this is just frustrating. Loop Ventures, which is not an analyst, but a venture capital fund, has put out a report that Teslas are safer. Three recent crashes has put autonomy and autopilot technology under scrutiny, but the bottom line is they beat the average by a lot. And if you follow Tesla, you know this, and there are a lot of people who say, well, yes, but these numbers represent all cars, not just new cars, and certainly not all new cars with active collision avoidance systems. And so, yeah, that may be true, but if those guys want to put out their numbers, they're welcome to do so, and let's see how they stack up. Volkswagen brand has already announced their halt to combustion engine development. We already saw this last week with uh, another manufacturer. I can't remember which one off the top of my head. Uh... Which one was it? Do you guys remember? Anyway, Volkswagen will no longer develop new combustion engines, and that is a big step in the move toward decarbonizing emissions from motor vehicles. Fun tweet. We don't have any information on whether FSD Beta and 8.3 and the button will be shipping this week, said Whole Mars Catalog, which is a really great Twitter, and you should probably follow it, and I should probably too. Given significant architectural changes, including fundamental improvements to Pure Vision, there is a limited value to testing 8.x, hoping to upload version 9.0 and button next month. There was some thought that full self-driving beta would be rolled out to the entire fleet uh, like a week or two ago, and I hadn't read it that way, but people smarter than me had, so no fault on that, but uh, we're still kind of on hold. 15 Tesla semi-electric trucks are expected to be delivered to Pepsi this year. So yeah, Pepsi has announced they're getting 15 trucks, giving us better insights into how they'll be moving forward with that program. And that would be, you know, great. Bit overdue if you ask me. The big concern, and I think the big bottleneck on semi-development right now, is a lack of cells. So how will you get the cells? Well, if you saw anything about Volkswagen's Power Day, you know they've got an aggressive plan to ramp up battery production, but nowhere close to Tesla's plan to ramp up battery production as well. And looking out, <laughs> even next year, the year beyond 2030, Tesla hopes to have the most production in the world, probably even if you combine them all together. Clean Technica has this great story this week. Average construction costs for solar photovoltaic generators has gone down. Solar is getting cheap, and it's doing it real fast. Solar is the cheapest electricity in history. 
U.S. Department of Energy aims to cut costs by an additional 60% over the next 10 years. If you look at deployments, and for that matter, the cost per kilowatt hour, boy, is it going down, and it is a fantastic trend that needs to continue. The only issue is, you know, storage, which is something that Tesla's also working on. If you haven't seen my video about how Tesla can get to $47 billion in revenue, check out this video, I guess. Bit off topic, but Mayor Francis Suarez of Miami said, Today I had the opportunity to visit Boring Company Tunnels in Las Vegas. After seeing the innovative and outstanding work Elon and his team have done, I can't wait to see what we can do for Miami. This will revolutionize the modern-day transit-oriented lifestyle of our city. With some pretty fun pictures there. And it should be said that while Miami will definitely be underwater in the next 10 to 20 years, uh, they built tunnels underwater. So maybe the new mole people of Miami can seek refuge in those tunnels at that time. If you find this information helpful, please gently depress that subscribe button, but only once, because YouTube is super awful about showing my videos to people otherwise. Edmonds put out a controversial EV range leaderboard looking at real-world observations rather than just the stated range. Still found Tesla Model 3 long range at the top, Porsche Taycan doing fantastic there, and Model S performance. There's a lot of Teslas in this mix, and there's some real embarrassments at the bottom. 150 miles, Mini Cooper, what are you doing? Chinese EV maker NIO has announced a temporary suspension of production due to chip shortages. And this has been plaguing a lot of manufacturers. Uh, Tesla seems less affected than others. They did have a couple days of shutdown, but that's in part because they ordered uh, the number that they needed. So, I mean, that, that really helps. So that's it for the Patreon overtime. Hey guys, if you like this segment and this concept, let me know in the comments because it's something new I'm trying out and I'll keep doing these ad-free for at least a while and I'll keep them free for everyone, not just my patrons, at least, you know, for now. I'm just glad to have you guys here. Last thing for today, if you guys have some unique skills or insight and you want to help out the channel, get in touch and let me know your thoughts. I could use help setting up some merch for the giveaways, and I'd love to find an editor to help me out before the big road trip in July. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me an earload in the comments below and stay tuned, uh, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop.